We were talking before the show that as we were brainstorming potential destinations for digs yesterday, we both thought of the Cowboys and the Texans. And the caveat with the Cowboys, or not the Texans, the, the Chiefs, Chiefs, Cowboys, right. Chiefs. The, the caveat with the Cowboys was, well, what's, what's your quarterback situation? And you, you were saying before the show, you had thought of the Texans, and I should have thought of the Texans because here he is, young quarterback who has shown great potential, who can be a guy who serves up a lot of passes in Stephon Diggs' direction that, you know, Diggs can ride out the remainder of his career as Stroud moves into the front end of his prime. In hindsight, that makes a lot of sense. I didn't even think of it. You thought of it. It just didn't come out during the show. And ultimately, you know, when it happens, it's one of those things, damn, yeah. it makes a lot of sense. It does, right. That, that's right. It does. It makes a lot of sense. You know, it's, it's, they got a little bit of everything now, right? That, that's right. You know, sometimes I've, I use this analogy of like you know, wide receivers. It's like you got to have a. It's like a basketball team. You got to have a little bit of everything, right? A guy with size. You got to have the point guard. You got to have the shooting guard. He's the shooting guard. Can kind of do it all. Then they got a Tank Dell who's really kind of just like the jitterbug guy, maybe the point guard. And you got a Nico Collins on the outside that's, hey, the bigger body. You could throw it up to me. I can run by some people down the field. So they got a little bit of everything to offer as far as, you know, talent at that position and making it hard for teams to match up against their group there. And that's where I think there is beauty of it. And, yeah, you know, you, you couple that team now with – that offensive line, which is damn good when it's healthy, Dalton Schultz at tight end, Nico Collins, Tank Dell, Stefan Diggs, Joe Mixon and Damian Pierce at running back with that quarterback and that offensive scheme, yeah, that certainly, I think, opens my eyes and makes me think differently about the Houston Texans. I mean, I, I already was going <clears throat> AFC South. They can win that. We know that. But I think this puts them into more like what you talked about, like, whoa, the gap might be a little closer between them and the Chiefs than we, we think, right? It, it, it makes you think, well, they're maybe a little more of a Super Bowl contender than I gave them credit for, you know, before yesterday. They've had some great performances from Noah Brown as well. John Mechie the third, who missed his first season yeah, as he was dealing right. with cancer. He's in a position where he's got untapped potential. And w what a turnaround this is for the Texans. It's incredible. Who, entering last year, were the one team that most, if not all, would have agreed have no chance to make the playoffs. And, of course, they, they made the playoffs. In a very difficult AFC, they made it. They won that division. And now... I, after all that Deshaun Watson ugliness and the Jack Easterby influence on Cal McNair, how that team got dragged down with Easterby trying to pretend to be the general manager. Once they cleared him out, you know, in hindsight, that may have been the best move. All due respect to Jack Easterby. That may have been the best move that they made. Clearing out that influence, allowing Nick Casario to run the team, hiring D'Amico Ryans to be the coach, and off we go. It yeah. does show you how quickly a bad team can turn it around. It helps to have three first-round picks from the Browns as well as you offload a quarterback who didn't want to be there anymore. That's right. But but still, they're, they're in much better shape than we ever would have dreamed, and the sky is the limit. Now, the schedule, as we said earlier, not easy this year. But they played last year like a team that can compete with anyone. Yeah, they did, right? I mean, you look at it and what they've done on defense and, and free agency. You look and you go, well, they're, 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 they're legit, right? I mean, we'll see how that translates on the field and how legit it is. But I don't think there's any team we're going to look at in football and go, oh, wow, you know, the Texans are overmatched. Right. Uh, that, that's that's not happening for sure. Right. It's talent throughout the roster. And I think like, you you know, you you're said it right. I think Easter B was probably a little bit of distraction, that whole organization. And I think really we got to give Nick Casario a lot of credit. He's kind of yeah, he's a quiet GM. He's not one that we talk about or see a lot. He stays in the background. And I, I worked for Nick in, in New England. I could tell you he's the most diligent, detailed guy in the world. Right. That's where he's amazing. And the, the, I feel like Nick Casario, you know, a big part of like flipping the team over too, you know, didn't didn't chase, you know, didn't chase pipe dreams when he first became the 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 GM. He didn't give, oh, I'm just gonna get a star player and give him a big contract. In fact, Mike, I think he kind of started the new trend that we saw this year at free agency of let's just sign guys to one and three year deals 
and go from there. Remember he did that a few years ago and we were like, man, look at all these guys the Texans have on a one-year deal. I think because he knew I'm going to make moves in the future and I don't want to be you know, tied to anybody for too long with money and all of that. So they've made a lot of right moves here the last two years. It's really incredible to turn around. And I, I do want to give Nick Casario Look at that credit. activity. Put Right. It's incredible, put right? Back up. That's yeah. incredible. Right. The the I mean, they've they've let a lot of guys go, and those are strategic decisions to move on from certain players in an effort to get better. And what they've done, the number yeah, again, we, we were having fun earlier about the Cowboys saying we're all in and not doing Jack Diddley squat. The Texans didn't say anything. They just went all in. Yeah. Daniil Hunter, Joe Mixon, Stephon Diggs leading that list of guys with star power, name recognition, and still gas in the tank who can come in and make a team that was already competitive even better. Yeah. What a turnaround right. by the Houston Texans yeah. in only one year. No, that is right. And then, Mike, you, you said those are the star names. You know, in football world, guys like Fadu Kasi, a D-line, Danico Autry, right? Aziz El Shayer at linebacker. I mean, they're really good football players. They're not superstars. Aziz El Shayer is borderline Pro Bowl type, all pro type of guy for my money. So not only did they get the, you know, guys and flashing lights that you put a banner about, they got some, you know, you know, like, what do I want to say? Upper upper middle class guys to go along with that, that you go, oh, that guy's going to help out the team. Man, I mean, Dean Eco, Autry, I mean, he can play DN, he can play D-tackle, he's phenomenal in so many ways, right? So that that's what you got to love. They really got something brewing down there in Houston. Yeah, I, I and, and I don't want to give short shrift to their schedule because no, it really right. looks right. to be difficult. Winning that division guarantees that you're going to play four other Division winners. No, five other division winners. Yeah, right. Because you're guaranteed to play the three division winners from your conference. You play all four teams from one division in another conference, and thus the division winner. And that 17th game will be division winner from one other division. It rotates in the other conference. Right. So it's going to be a challenge this year for the Texans. And we will see a lot of of uh, the Houston Texans and C.J. Stroud Sunday night, Monday night, Thursday night, and I've already made the open plea to the NFL because, you know, they, they, they always listen to everything I suggest. Texans at Cowboys Thanksgiving middle game because Houston does play at Dallas this year, and it's no longer tied to which network had. You know, it used to go back and forth because there had to be an AFC visiting. Oh, uh, yeah, right. They can put whatever they want right. in that spot in the late afternoon on Thanksgiving. Texans Cowboys would be a massive rating they don't have to do it because of the captive audience but boy i'd love to see that game in that spot yeah i i hear you there i would too battle of texas on thanksgiving right i mean they dislike you so much now though that now that you said it they probably won't do it for sure uh but uh, either can, way can we good. have the can, can we, we get, have the can we get M- the cowboys can we have <laughs> any other team than the texans please and maybe, any team but the texans on thanksgiving now they haven't got a chance maybe we college. can get on nbc maybe we can get houston you know, hosting Buffalo uh, on that third game, you know, that night. That would mean wouldn't be bad either. I'd take that too. A couple of Thanksgiving games in Texas. I would like that. I think Houston hosting Buffalo becomes one of the marquee games of the season. Houston at Kansas City becomes a significant game. Houston at Minnesota with Diggs going back to the place where, you know, he had the the biggest play in the history of U.S. Bank Stadium, the Minneapolis right. Miracle. He's un- he's reunited again with Case Keenum. They were together in Buffalo, and now they're together again in Houston, even though Keenum likely won't be playing. So a lot of uh, fun times coming this year involving the Houston Texans. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.